today is an extra special video. I'm gonna do a two year owner review. After owning my Jayco Pinnacle for two years, I'm gonna share my candid thoughts. I'm gonna score this on a score of zero to 100. And then at the end, I'm gonna come back and tell you if I would buy it all over again after everything that I've learned over the last two years. Now, if you're in the market for a fifth wheel and you've been considering the Jayco Pinnacle or even the sister product, the North Point, you know, they're getting more and more similar, then this is definitely the video for you regardless of what model year you're interested in. This video is not sponsored by Jayco. They didn't put me up to this. I'm just an average owner letting you look in over the last two years of ownership. And you know, spending money on a fifth wheel, they're very expensive. And so it's a big decision. And I think it's really helpful to hear from an owner and what their experience has been. So you can decide whether this model and brand is right for you. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be giving my fifth wheel a score on a scale of zero to 100. And so that's largely what the review is going to revolve around. This is a brand new format, by the way. You know, for those who subscribe to my channel, you know I typically don't go around to dealerships and do reviews on, you know, random RVs and such, but maybe I'll do some of that in the future, we'll see. But I figured it'd be helpful to have some structure to the review, and so that's why I came up with this score from zero to 100. So let me talk about the point allocation and how I'm gonna work that. So I've got my little cheat sheet here. So again, it's out of 100 points and broken down into six sections. So the first section is the appearance and that's 20 points right there. So basically, you know, how it looks, just visually, aesthetically, how it looks, all right? 20 points right there. Then another 20 points is going to be on the quality or perceived quality, at least. And, you know, that's, you know, how it's built, how it's put together, right? And then another 20 points on innovation, on the category of innovation. So, you know, what are they doing differently as a brand that's unique, that really sets them apart, right? So 20 points right there. Then another 20 points on the category ready to camp, basically meaning is there anything grossly missing from the RV? Is there anything that you really have to do before you can actually take it out to a campsite and you know reliably and comfortably camp? So that's another 20 points right there. And then there's two more sections that are gonna be 10 points. So these latter two are just 10 points. The first one's gonna be under value, the category of value. How does the fifth wheel, how does the RV rate in terms of value? And then the last one, 10 points is gonna be the post sale experience. You know, what is it like interacting with the company when you need warranty work and things like that? And so all those add up to 100 points and that's gonna be the format for today's review. All right, so to kick off the review, I'm gonna talk about the appearance. And like I said, this category is 20 points total that I can allocate. And so let me just start right up here and talk about this front cab because I think this is one of the best looking front caps in the business. You know, some fifth wheels, they have a lot of nice features and they look really good on the inside, but oh, the front cap is just ugly. It just doesn't do it any favors. And I think this is one of the best looking front caps in the business. I don't think it does justice looking at it just on video. I'll try to get you some different angles here, but I mean, just the contour and the body lines, you know, this is the first thing that you see on this RV. And I think Jayco nailed it. I think this is a really sharp looking front cap. And even just the body lines going down, of course, this is a wide body, a drop frame and everything, but the way they tapered everything and wrapped it, you know, in sheet metal there. I even like this ivory fiberglass. Of course, this is not full body paint, and they did change this to more of a white color in the 24s, but I actually like the ivory. I think it looks kind of rich. And of course, these are vinyl graphics. They didn't overdo it. You know, I think they did a really nice job with the vinyl and making it look really, really sharp. I'll come over to the other side so you can see. So I mean, outside, I think visually, it's just a really sharp looking unit. Even the, the words pinnacle, I mean, that's just a really prominent way to put those letters on there and uh, just really looks nice from an appearance standpoint. And I mean, that's just outside. If we go inside, I've said this many times in my videos, but just look at all the colors and the contrast inside the coach here. I mean, I think the designers at Jayco, and this really goes for, I think just about all their products, even the more affordable entry-level lines, I've noticed that they always have some really nice colors, different textures inside, and you look around and there's just so many interesting things to look at, different materials they use on the valances, the wallboard, 
the different trim colors. You know, this does not look bland by any stretch. And I mean, look at just how nice everything looks. You know, it's not overdone where it's overstimulating as you walk around, but there's just a lot of different colors. Just looks really rich here. The bathroom, I mean, look at this shower. I still think this is one of the nicest showers in the business. And then look at this bedroom. I mean, it's just like a resort, like you're at a really nice hotel. Everything is just tied together so nicely. So from an appearance standpoint, I think they have nailed it. Now, if I'm being picky, there might be a few things that I don't care for, like this little mosaic backsplash there. I think it looks a little bit dated there. Or the style and shape of the theater seating and the couches and this kind of material that they've selected. Not a big fan of those. They've changed all that, by the way, in the 24. So I'm going to take away two points on the appearance scale of 20. So I'm gonna give 18 out of 20 points on appearance. Now the next section or category of the review is gonna be on quality in terms of how well it's put together, the finishes and such. And for those who subscribe to my channel, you know that I've done a ton of mods on the Pinnacle. And so I have taken apart just about every area of the fifth wheel and seen behind the scenes, you know, how things were put together in the factory and such. And the overall pattern that I've noticed in general, I mean, sure I could nitpick, but the overall pattern is it appears they have a very high level of quality in terms of putting things together. Now I should clarify when I'm speaking of quality, you know, there's that hidden quality that you don't see, such as the chassis and the wall structure, the slide boxes, you know, how everything's put together. And I think the engineers have so much experience within Jayco that they really make some wise choices on all that so that you don't have what I would categorize as, you know, catastrophic issues down the road. You know, hear about some of the newer brands that are out there that are still trying to figure some of that out. And you hear about these horror stories where they have to, you know, rip out the entire floor because something was done, you know, wrong there, or they have to take out an entire wall and fix it. And I think with Jayco, you're gonna find in general, they have a lot of experience in their engineering, and so things are put together in a very high quality fashion. But then there's also quality in terms of just durability and how things look visually. And I think in Jayco in general, especially in the Pinnacle and North Point lineup, their finishes, the quality of their finishes is incredible. And I mean, this really stands out, I think, here, especially on the cabinets. You know, just look at all the detail here in this raised panel door, the different accents, that darker accent and all the grooves here, and just the painted finish alone. Then you've got, of course, some stained finish right next to it. And I mean, just a, a really nice finish. Everything's real nice and tight together. You know, you look at some of the different millwork, the different trim, and even how they've mitered, you know, different pieces of molding together on the slide boxes here. I mean, just look at the different colors here, how they did that accent on the inside, the 45 degree miters on the crown up here. I mean, there's so much detail here. And, you know, I've looked at a lot of different houses on the market, you know, million dollar houses. And I think the trim, the millwork, the cabinetry that you're seeing here rivals that of, I'm just gonna say multi-million dollar homes depending on where you live. And so I think Jayco has just a very high quality overall finish inside their coaches and uh, it just looks really sharp. However, as nice as everything is, I am gonna take away two points because I think Jayco uses way too many staples and nails and it takes away from the beauty. I mean, just check this out on this piece of crown, this trim up here. They've got staples all the way down here and it just takes away visually from how nice everything is. And that's really the pattern you'll see throughout with all the molding, even on the wall board. I mean, check out up here. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but I mean, it's just staple, staple, staple all the way across the top. And so I'd really like to see them transition to using more glue perhaps and fewer staples, fewer nails, do a better job filling it. It almost stands out more because of the beauty of their millwork and everything. You see those staples more. So I'm gonna take away two points for that in terms of quality and that's gonna leave a score of 18 out of 20. The next category is innovation and this also has 20 possible points allocated to it. So innovation in terms of what is Jayco doing that's unique, that really helps make that whole experience when you're at the campsite better and more seamless. And I did a whole video on what makes Jayco different than other brands and so I'll put a card up for that. But it's things like 
you know, this simple drinking water solution where they've got a five gallon jug with a pump attached to it. I mean, that's really slick because then you don't have to worry about filters. You can bring along your favorite water, or other things like having 120 pounds of propane capacity, right? Game changer, especially if you're camping in cold climates. Or how about the J Command, the BM Pro Smart RV system here, where you know everything's integrated into this control panel. It's really slick, especially how you can control stuff from your phone. Things like that are very innovative. In fact, Jayco has a lot of patents that they hold with all the different features incorporated into their units. And that's why you don't see things like the filtered drinking water on competing brands because it's actually patented. So I really like that a lot. I think Jayco has a lot of innovation going. However, I am gonna take five points off on this category because I'd like to see more innovation in terms of electric heat. You know, of course you've got the standard fireplace, you've got a heat pump here, and that's great, but that really only serves this area of the coach going toward the middle. It doesn't help with your underbelly, especially in the winter months. So I'd like to see more electric heat options. I've explored some things like that with an electric heater that I've got down in the uh, underbelly, the basement storage area. So I'll throw up a card for that, but I'd like to see more innovation on that front. And then also I'd like to see maybe a lithium option that's standard, right? I mean, they have max solar options where you get tons of lithium batteries and amp hours and everything, but I'd really like to see just a basic, you know, 200 amp hour lithium package that's standard with all pinnacles. I mean, that really seems like the direction things are going, lead acid and AGM batteries, they just don't make a lot of sense. So I'd like to see lithium standard. I think that would be really innovative. I'd like to see more innovation in terms of the internet solution. You know, they give you this WineGuard Connect standard and I've been using it for the last two years and it's okay, but it's not very reliable, especially on the 4G access. It seems like the router inside here is the weak point. So I've been exploring with a TravelFi router and you can check out my video I did on that. Been very pleased with that. So I'd like to see more innovation in terms of the internet. And then I'd also like to see more innovation in terms of the entry steps here. You can see I've got these torque lift glow step revolution uprising. I'd love to see a manufacturer go back to putting in conventional step wells in conjunction with these steps that you get the benefit of having, you know, solid steps there. These offer so much flexibility in terms of how far you can deploy them. But then the steps, if they had a traditional conventional step well, you wouldn't be flipping up all that dirt, that sand into your coach every time. They would just stay nice and neat, tucked under there in the frame. And so for those reasons, I took away five points on innovation. So 15 out of 20. All right, the next category is ready to camp. This is 20 points total that I can allocate. So ready to camp, what am I talking about? Well, you know, how well does a brand like Jayco produce a unit where you can literally take it right off of the assembly line when it's done in manufacturing and take it out to camp? I mean, is there anything significant and major that you need to do? And so in this section, I think the single biggest thing that stands out to me is down under here, the underbelly. And the way Jayco puts this underbelly together, you know, just like any RV, it has a heated and enclosed underbelly. But this material, this corrugated plastic, rests on the inside of the I-beam, basically just by gravity. And so there's nothing fastening the outer edges of this material to the I-beam, meaning that there's big cracks and crevices. And I did a whole video on sealing your underbelly. So definitely check that out if you haven't. But you can see here, I've sealed it up by using zip tape so that you know mice can't crawl up in there, so that bugs can't crawl up in there, let alone that you don't have hot air you know, leaking into your coach. So I think that's probably the biggest thing that I'd like to see change. Another area that I'm gonna dock some points in terms of ready to camp is on the cargo carrying capacity. I did a whole video on this previously talking about it. You know, my unit is heavily optioned with a generator, washer, dryer, right? Other things that take away from that cargo carrying capacity. But from the factory, my unit had just over 1,500 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. And for me, I think that's a little bit anemic, especially for a luxury fifth wheel. You know, a lot of people are buying these to live in full time. Now, to be fair, like I said, my unit is heavily optioned, but you gotta keep in mind that on the manufacturer websites, they typically are posting cargo carrying capacity for a less optioned unit that doesn't have things like a generator, maybe a third AC, things like that. But I will say to be fair, Jayco did increase the gross vehicle weight rating of the Pinnacle by 500 pounds, I think in the next model year 
after uh, my unit was made. So at least now, if my exact unit was manufactured, I'd have about 2,000 pounds of cargo carrying capacity, which is a lot better. Then I'm also gonna take some points away on these Goodyear Endurance tires. These are E-rated tires. Yes, they are Goodyear, and yes, to be fair, each one is rated for over 4,000 pounds, and there's really only about 12,000 pounds resting on the axles here, but being such a big, large, heavy fifth wheel, that E-rated status just has never sit well with me. I'd like to see these, you know, H-rated, G-rated. And again, to be fair, in the 24s, they're putting on Uniroyals that are G or H rated tires. And so they've addressed that moving forward. And then last detail I'll point out under ready to camp, it might seem like a small detail, but I think it makes a really significant difference, especially in a six figure fifth wheel. And that is we have a 12 volt exhaust fan here. The fan is powered obviously, but the lid is a manual open close. Every time you wanna use this exhaust fan, you have to reach up here and crank and turn the lid open and closed. And you know, Jayco's ceilings are pretty tall to begin with. Not a problem if you're tall reaching it, but think about your spouse. Maybe they're not as tall, maybe your kids can't reach up there. But then furthermore, again, this is a six plus figure fifth wheel. And I don't think in that price point, people should have to reach up there and open and close the lid on that vent manual each time. It's my understanding that even on the 24s, there still is a manual open close on the vent. So I'm not sure what the story on that is, but I really think that needs to be a powered open close. So for that reason, I'm gonna take some more points away and the total score here on Ready to Camp is 14 out of 20 points. The next section of the review is value. You know, how much are you getting in return for what you're paying? Because let's face it, RVs are expensive and I can think of brands and not to pick on Airstream for example, but they are very, expensive and I'm sure they're very well made. So again, not to pick on them, but I've always looked at that and thought, wow, they're really expensive. I just don't feel like I'm getting value. It may be very high quality, very well built perhaps, but I don't feel like I'm getting a lot in return there. So let's talk about the Jayco Pinnacle and the North Point for that matter, because they're so similar in terms of value, you know, what you're paying versus what you get. And I'll just say that I think you get an incredible value here in the Pinnacle, especially visually. I mean, just look around how beautiful everything looks. You know, I've talked about the quality already, how everything was put together. So in terms of value, I really do think you get a lot, especially for the price point. So I'm gonna give nine out of 10. This section's only 10 points, so I'm gonna give nine out of 10 in terms of value. All right, now the last section of the review is gonna be the post-sale experience, and like the previous section, there's only 10 points possible here. So let's talk about the post-sale experience for the Jayco Pinnacle, or even the North Point for that matter. And basically, you know, everything after you buy the unit, you know, what is that experience like, especially when you need parts or service, you know, things under warranty. What is that post-sale experience like? And I'll just say that it's my understanding when you reach out to Jayco Service as a Pinnacle owner, you're not talking to someone in the luxury fifth wheel division. You're talking to a generic customer service group that I believe services all the different products under Jayco. I think maybe even into the Highland Ridge RV brand, the Integra brand and such. And so I think part of the problem is they're just not used to some of the unique needs of a Pinnacle customer and the expectations that a Pinnacle customer might have in terms of service and warranty. So I'm not gonna go into detail on this one. I don't like to be negative, but basically I will say that the pattern was when I did need service, parts, things under warranty, it was very difficult. It was a very much a, a pain point, uh, at least for me. And y'all watching, if you're owners, let me know if you agree here. But uh, basically I felt like I always had to jump through hoops or always had to argue or bubble things up to leadership to really get some very basic, you know, seemingly uh, basic things like a nut cap for a, a toilet, uh, you know, things like that. And so again, I'm not gonna go into details, but I would like to see them train those customer service reps and just really transform, revolutionize that department into one that respects the customer, respects the customer in terms of their time, in terms of the fact that, hey, we have a warranty that we advertise, let's stand behind it and uh, not make excuses, right? So I'd like to see some changes there in the service. And again, I think the problem is that, you know, Mike and his team that lead the luxury fifth wheel space, 
the pinnacle, the North Point, the seismic and such, I don't think they have any control over it. I think they're just the product itself. And then there's that common customer service group. So I think, Mike, if you're watching this and you're able to convince your bosses to let you and your team you know, handle customer service or start a, a division of customer service for the luxury fifth wheel brands or the higher end brands, I think that would be prudent just because the needs of those customers, I think, and the expectations of those customers are a little bit different compared to just everyone that buys uh, a Jayco product. So for that reason, I'm going to give two points out of 10. I'm trying to be gracious. I could do one point, but I will say I gave two because in the end, Jayco does take care of you as a customer. It's just, I don't want to have to jump through hoops. I don't want to have to argue and spend so much time. And so I'm going to give two points out of 10 for the post sale experience. All right, so next I'm gonna tally the total score among those six sections out of 100 and give you that number and then answer the question, would I buy it all over again? But before I do that, let me just tack something on to that last section, you know, the post sale customer experience. And I'll just say this, to be fair, when you buy a Jayco, because they have been around for a long time, I think they're very well experienced, especially in engineering and how everything's put together. I don't think you're gonna be reaching out to customer service as much as you would with some of the other brands, especially some of the newer brands out there, right? I and mean, there's some other newer brands and I'm not gonna name them. They have amazing customer service, or at least they're known for that, right? Where they just step up to the plate and take care of those customers. And it's probably true that some of those brands have more issues because they're learning the engineering, the manufacturing process and you know getting everything uh, fine tuned. And so with those brands, you're gonna be interacting more with customer service and they have their reputation to build and defend as a new brand, right? Whereas Jayco is established, they've been doing this for a long time. I think Jayco's a little bit more relaxed on that customer service front. It's not their priority. But I think when you buy a Pinnacle, at least, or a North Point, you're just not gonna be dealing with the customer service side as much. But when you do, if it's minor issues like mine, it just is uh, quite a pain, and I just don't like having to jump through those, those hoops. So I'll just say that. But let's total all those different sections, those six sections. So again, this is out of 100 points. And total, we're looking at a score of 76 out of 100 and i'll put those different sections up on the screen here so that you can review them here at the end you know that 76 out of 100 may seem like kind of an arbitrary number since this is the first review and i don't know if i'll do a lot of these reviews in the future or not but it kind of does give you an idea of where i took some points away on those different categories those different sections so 76 out of 100 I think that's pretty good, but let me answer the question now, would I buy it all over again? And for me, that answer is very simple. Jayco gets so many things right. You know, I did a video a few weeks back on choosing the right mid bunk. So if you're a mid bunk buyer, you're looking at one of those, definitely watch that video. But in that video, I mean, it just highlights that Jayco gets so many things right in terms of the design, the engineering, just the way they package everything together. And so even though, the post-sale experience has been a little bit of a sour note. You know, I still would buy a Pentacle over again because let's face it, they get so many things right. So yes, I would buy the Pentacle all over again. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you've got any questions about it, definitely drop me a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.